We've got Merritt Centennial's head coach and GM Luke Pierce on the line with us for our weekly recap. Luke, thanks so much for taking the time to chat here this morning. My pleasure, Brian. So a pretty busy week for you guys. Last week uh, you had a full week off before the games kicked in. Let's start with Friday night against Powell River. Yeah, it was uh, a game I thought we played uh, played fairly well in for for the majority of it. Uh, you know, we gave up two goals there. Uh, they were strictly just mistakes on our behalf. And um, then the third goal, they got kind of broke our backs a little bit there, and uh, it was an unfortunate break for against us. But uh, overall, you know, I thought we we played a fairly decent game against uh, what I feel is probably the best team in the league at this point. Yeah, they looked fantastic out there, and you're right. I think that five nothing is probably uh, a, a little flattering to them actually, because you guys uh, seem to play pretty well in that game, uh, save for uh, you know a few mental mistakes there, like you mentioned. Now, correcting those mental mistakes going into Saturday's game against Westside, do you think that happened for your guys? Well, it, it, actually, it took us the first period. I was I was shocked because we went over some of the breakdowns that we made on Friday, and we actually made two of the exact same ones on uh, on Saturday that led to uh, you know a two one lead for them. And uh, once we you know reaffirmed that those need to stop happening, the, the guys really settled in, and I thought put in uh, an outstanding effort to uh, you know being as short as we were with you know essentially getting down to just playing our three lines and. Uh, Tyler Steele was was tremendous coming back from from his suspension and uh, and gave us the chance to win and then you know we dug a little deeper there and uh, we had some contributors from from all different lines that uh, helped us get through that one so that was a big win for our group. You know it almost seems like uh, when you guys get down that's almost what you need for that killer instinct. Yeah, and I think we need to uh, you know we need to learn how to. Uh, take advantage of teams that you know maybe aren't quite ready to play instead of letting them get into games and uh, we did manage to get the first goal on uh, on Saturday but you know gave up two quick ones and then again on Sunday gave up the first goal and and had to battle back to to get the win but uh, that's something that I think we'll still uh, we'll work on and then we'll hopefully get sorted out here soon. So how about that game against the Quinnell Millionaires uh, tied 1-1 Sunday going into the third period but then you guys come out with uh, three goals in that period how about your overall thoughts on that win? Well, I thought it was, uh, you know, probably wasn't the greatest game to to watch from a spectator's point of view. It was a little bit scrambly, and but we had to be conservative, and um, you know, we almost played it like a road game because, again, uh, down to three lines, and uh, you know, Cam Crawford left the game uh, at the end of the second period, so five defensemen, and uh, we just, you know, chip pucks deep and, and kept things simple and, and let the game come to us and. We were opportunistic and, and pounced on the on chances we got, and um, at the end of the day, we'll take it. Yeah, absolutely. Moving into sole possession of sixth place in the Interior Conference. Now, you and I talked last week about how important this stretch of games was for your club. You've now taken two of three you know, in this stretch of six really important games, and now you've got three coming up up north. Um, do you express to these guys how important these games are, or is it just another game in terms of going out there and trying to get two points? Yeah, well, we've talked about, uh, you know, we've broken our season down into uh, 12 five-game segments, and Westside was the start uh, of another five-game segment for us with uh, Cornell being game two, and then the next three up north will wrap up that five-game set. And, you know, we talked about the entire five-game set and what we want to uh, accomplish out of that and how important we felt it was at this time of the year. But once you get into, you know, prior to the game and talking, we've got to focus on, uh, you know, our first shift and our first period and, and take it game by game. And um, I think, you know, in the bigger picture, the guys understand, but, uh, you know, we got to fine tune it right down to that specific night and hopefully we can keep ourselves on track there. Now, uh, how about uh, the way things are looking in terms of getting bodies back? Finally, you're going to have uh, Sean Mactack, you're going to have Dylan Playfair back in the lineup, and the only players you're going to have out are for injury so is it going to be a nice flexibility and is it a an encouraging thought knowing that you managed to keep your head above water here through all these suspensions through all these injuries i mean in the month of october you're 500 yeah i think you know it it showed that uh we're capable of battling through the adversity that uh, that comes in any given year and um it was nice to get you know the three lines that played uh, regularly here this weekend I think they really started to develop some chemistry and we saw production from every line and and some individual players really started to step up their game so maybe it was what they needed was to you know play a little more often and um you know not have to panic about you know getting benched because they didn't have a good shift or whatever so uh it's good we got those three lines really rolling and we'll work on getting the guys uh 
you know, from suspension back and the injured guys back and, and finding out where they're going to fit in from there. But uh, it'll be nice to have that uh, luxury that we can some, we can rest some guys if need be and uh, really get back to, to playing with the full lineup here. Now, you know that Evan Stack for sure is going to be out this weekend. What's the status of Steve Wall and uh, maybe Cameron Crawford after he did leave that game on Sunday? Yeah, well, Cam's, uh, you know, pretty much day to day here, and I would expect him to be back on the weekend. And uh, Steve Wall will be, you know, he'll be again uh, assessed daily here, and we're hoping to try and get him back in by, you know, Friday. And uh, if not, I think he will play at some point on the weekend. Um, Reese Wilcox is uh, probably, you know, at the earliest would be a Sunday game, but again, that's something that we'll monitor throughout the week and. We don't want to rush guys back. We've we've shown that we can play, uh, you know, a few guys short if need be, and at the same time, we don't want to, you know, put extra strenuous on the on the guys that are playing and, and risk further injury. So we'll be really careful, but we do know that we'll have the two uh, suspended guys back, and and then the injured guys will just uh, be really cautious with them. Now I know uh, one thing before I let you run. A lot of fans here in Merritt want to know about your thoughts of how Eric Schmidt played in the three games this weekend. I thought Eric did a great job, and uh, you know he he's a, a smart kid. He was able to make the transition from from midget here to uh, to junior A pretty quickly. Um, you know he's obviously still got work to do, but but so do a lot of guys. And uh, I thought that you know he was very encouraging. He uh, was very vocal and, and supportive of the group. And uh, I think that given some more time and hopefully some practice here, we'll likely 